Welcome to the subject of agronomy, lecture 2, science and agronomy. This subject is offered as part of the agricultural degree at North Melbourne Institute of TAFE, which is based in Australia. Please visit our website for details on this subject and the educational courses and products that we offer. www.nmit.edu.au I will be teaching this subject throughout this 12-week semester. This is the second lecture and here I shall introduce the concepts around science and how science is applicable to agronomy. My name is Dr Nikki Cooley. In this lecture on the topic of science and agronomy, we will start off with an introduction to science. We will look at why agronomy and science how is science communicated? And we will touch on some of the fundamental concepts of science. We will then be introduced to a teaching aid, the Yang Ying Teaching and Research Demonstrator. This is set in the Yang Ying farm at NMIT. In this subject, you will have many visits to this farm. We hope to show both research, that is field experimentation, and an example of a cropping and fertiliser demonstrator. This topic is quite large, so this lecture will be separated into two parts. In part one, we will be introduced to science, and in part two, we will concentrate on the details of the Yang Ying teaching and research demonstrator. Agronomy is a science and a practice that requires investigation from an integrated and holistic perspective. When you grow a crop, when you put a plant in the soil, there are many inputs that you have to consider. And it is the number and the complexity of these in inputs that requires both an integrated and a holistic perspective. These inputs include the property of the soil and how the soil interacts with the growing crop. What nutrients, when do you apply them, how often? The way the crop grows and develops. The climate and other environmental factors. And how best to control weeds, pests and diseases. All of this knowledge is required to, to be known at all crop stages. And while considering the above, if that's not enough, you also have to look at the commercial perspective. For example, the crop productivity and crop returns. This needs to be considered, as well as how do you conserve natural resources or minimal input farming. And, where possible, how do you protect the environment? So it is the many number of inputs into agronomy that leads to complexity and it is the complexity of agronomy that, in, that is its biggest challenge. So let's look at this in a bit more detail. If you own a farm and you are managing a crop and you come across a problem, for example you might have a pest or there might be a heatwave event and you need to decide how you manage this. When you're making that decision, you also have to consider all the fa other factors of crop growth and development. For example, if you spray and use a certain chemical, how will that impact on your growth, development, yield, yield quality, other pests? It is very complicated. It is worth considering while you are growing a crop, you are also managing many ecosystems. This includes the soil environment, possibly the water table, which could impact on rivers, streams, surrounding farms and the sea. You are also managing local flora, the communities of pests and diseases that are on your farm and around your farm. And everything you do can impact on both you, your neighbours and the local environment. In short, when you are growing crops, it requires knowledge from many different disciplines. This includes traditional soil, plant and weed sciences, as well as related disciplines such as ecology, entomology, climatology and economics. 
It has been shown many times that the best crop production methods are always grounded in scientific research. As a result, they are by their nature continue evolving and improving. So for these reasons, we are going to spend a considerable amount of time in this subject learning about field experimentation, where important agronomical concepts will be applied to the farm environment. Questions such as how do we improve our productivity sustainably? How do we manage our disease? If you are able to see an experiment from the start to its completion, you as students and future farmers will have a much better understanding of how to use this information from published research, as well as how to conduct robust experimental trials on your own or your managed crops if you need to do this. I'd like to spend the time in the next few slides in introducing you to the agro agronomical literature. Firstly, I'm going to start with journals and the concepts of journals. A journal can be defined as a periodical publication which reports the progress of science, usually by reporting new research. The reporting of this research in such formats is where the quality check of research occurs. Academics, who are mostly regarded as experts in their discipline, will be given the paper to read. They will rigorously and critically assess all of the above, experimentation, methods, statistics, and the conclusions that are made from the observations being reported. So, when you hear if a journal is scientifically peer-reviewed, you know that it has gone through this rigorous process of checks and further checks to ensure that new knowledge is actually being adding to, added to science. When an author sends a paper for peer review, they do not have any say in who will peer review the paper. It is often anonymous, so they do not know who has made those decisions and criticisms and comments. This is very important, as if you were having a chemical company, for example, doing this research, you need to be sure, in order for them to add progress to science, that they are not reporting just the observations that improve their economic gain. This allows for impartiality in the system. In 2008, the Agronomy Journal, which is one such journal that reports on agronomical findings and research and science, celebrated a hundred years of journal articles. Up until 2006, there were more than 30,290 authors which published a total of 15,232 articles. This is a lot of information and a lot of knowledge. There are many ways that you can access information about these journal articles. Often the best place to start is databases. I will not introduce you to introduce you to the NMIT databases in the library as you have probably already accessed these and if not you can seek a librarian and get them to help. But I will introduce you to some other sources that you may not have used. Web of Knowledge is one such database. If you use this and type in the word agronomy with a star next to it, you can see the most up-to-date scientific papers published on agronomy. The most up-to-date one, when I did a search on the 18th of July 2013, was titled Improving Potassium Acquisition and Utilisation of By Crop Plants. This database is expensive and not all people have access to it. However, you may want to look at other such databases, such as Google Scholar, when you conduct database searches, in most instances, there are a few pieces of information which are common. You will nearly always see the full title. You will see a list of authors 
and the name of the journal, the volume, the issue and the page number. And this will help you or the librarian to track down this particular article if you feel it's of use. Many database searches will also give you the abstract and it is excellent to spend some time reading this before you go and order the full article as this will tell you if, you are, um, if this article is able to provide you with the information and the new knowledge that you require. Depending on your search, often keywords will be highlighted throughout the text. In the first lecture when I was talking about assessments, I made it clear that proper referencing would be required if your quotes were going to be marked. So let us say that you read this paper and that you wanted to include some of the information to aid in your argument discussion in either your case studies or your practical reports. In the text after the sentence where you would repeat that knowledge or the sentence, you would quote the surname of the author, the first author, with the year that the article was written in. If there are more than one author, it is often, um, rather than writing all their names, you would put et al. Your article, case study or practical report, would then finish with a reference section. Here, you would write the full reference. You would include all the author's names, their surname and initial, then the year, the full title, the journal name, in this case Canadian Journal of Plant Science, the volume number, which in this article is 93, an issue number if you have that information, not all journals have issue numbers, that tends to be in brackets, followed by the page numbers where you can find the articles in this journal. Some articles have many, many authors and it is acceptable for you to quote only the first three authors, as I have done here, if this is the case. Please follow this correct referencing procedure. Another database you may find useful is called Google Scholar. It can be found within the Google uh, web-based search. You type in Google Scholar, this brings up a new page and in this you would then type, uh, would type in the topic of interest. So for example here you might type agronomy. When I did this search in July 2013 I was presented with a list of the top 20 journals. These are journals that are ranked across science as having the most impacts. The one at the top is Theoretical and Applied Genetics. This ranking means that there are many articles in this journal which have been quoted in other journals many times. The theory behind this is that the larger number of times that you're quoted, the more important and impacting your research is. Some of the journals that are particularly important when you're looking at applied agronomy rather than fundamental agronomy are crop science, soil and tillage research, plant and soil, field crop research, agronomy journal, journal of cereal science, the European Journal of Agronomy, and advances in, ag in agronomy as well as industrial crops and products. I'm going to have a quick look at some of the other resources available to you. You will all be familiar with books. Some books in agronomy are peer-reviewed with the same rigour that the scientific uh, journal articles are. All the agronomy series books that I will be giving you extracts for in this subject, for example, have all been peer-reviewed by highly respected scientists in this area. Web searches and web pages. I want you to be really mindful and careful when using these as resources. If you do not know the information, then you do not know if what you are looking at is correct or not. Often when students are asked to write an article, 
they will go onto Google or some other search page on the net. They will type a few keywords and they will copy and paste directly from the first three um, searches that they come across. Often the first pages that they come across include Wikipedia and other resources. Sometimes these students are lucky in that these resources have been peer-reviewed and they are of a high scientific rigour. However, in my experience, many students get this wrong. It, it takes more than 30 seconds to do a proper research into these areas, so please be mindful of this. Wikipedia in particular is a dictionary where if you know the answer to be correct, it's fine to use. But it is made up from a collection of people saying that this information is correct. It is not peer reviewed and it is often not written by experts. Government organisations are often very good uh, resources for information for agronomists. They are where extension offices exist so they are very skilled at taking the most up-to-date science that relates to the Australian climatic and soil conditions and relating, to, relating this information to farmers in a way that's understandable. Research organisations are also another excellent use, uh, source of information as they do very similar um, things that the government agencies do, that is that they fund research that's specific to Australia and Australia's climate in agronomy. The GRDC is, quite a, is, is a very good source for agronomists. If you wish to understand and improve agronomical outputs, it is worth noting if you're going to use the science base approach that science is an evolution. That means knowledge is continuously updating. Experiments are conducted, new observations are made, and new findings are made. There are several ways that knowledge can be gained in the area of agronomy. One can conduct traditional experiments, such as the ones we are going to do at the Yang Ying Teaching and Research Demonstrator. This is where you manipulate one component or input of your agronomical enterprise and you make observations about how that influences your yield, growth and development and other inputs. This will teach you how to conduct um, robust experiments, it will teach you about replication and it will teach you about the interconnectedness of the ecosystems that are agronomy the soil, the plant, the climate. There are other methods, however, which we are going to explore in this topic. You can construct models. From these models, you are able to um, undergo yield prediction. And there are some yield prediction models that are available open source, that means available to anybody, that we will be looking at. You can construct models to improve productions. With this you can model inputs and outputs and alter them theoretically before making any of these decisions in the field. With models you can test knowledge. Ensure that the scientific understanding that you have is correct. And finally you can establish mathematical and physiological relationships which help you and improve the confidence of the modelling. Throughout this subject, as well as lecture material, you will be given tutorial te uh, material which will help you with some of the concepts we are dealing with in the lectures. In the first tutorial, tutorial one, called Agronomic Research, you will be required to read the following paper by Dory et al. in 2011. Facing up to the paradigm of ecological intensification in agronomy, revisiting methods, concepts and knowledge. You will be asked to answer some questions from this tutorial. Your second task in this tutorial is to find an example of some journal literature. Please see Moodle for further details of this tutorial. Once you have completed the tutorial, 
Please include the discussions and your findings in this part of your lecture notes and this will complete your lecture notes on agronomy and science. That brings us to an end of part one of lecture two. Before watching part two of lecture two, I would like you to look at the following video on an introduction to the Yang Ying teaching and research demonstrator. This can be found in the Moodle under this topic. Thank you.